We're back here diagnosing a problem with the vacuum locking system on my W123 Mercedes. This is going to be multi-part series because we're going to be going through the entire vacuum system of this car and showing you every bit of it, how to adjust it, how to fix it, everything that I can possibly cram into videos. I'm going to try my very best to make sure that we cover the vacuum system top to bottom, every part of it in this car I want to touch on. And on that note, I'm making diagrams. Because there seems to be such a horrible availability of good quality, clear, concise diagrams for the vacuum systems on these cars, I'm making some. At the moment, it's a work in progress, but I will, as time goes on, improve and make the diagram better and uh, make it the best vacuum diagram for a W123 Mercedes that I can possibly make. So there's a link to that in the description. You can check it out on the website too. I have a uh, page where it's gonna be updated as I make uh, adjustments and improvements and add in more parts for the moment. Basically just the locking system is all I've been focusing on. But anyways, let's get back to business here. We're gonna have to pull out this liner here which just involves getting our fingers in the top, and just kind of pulling that down and just wiggling it out. I'm taking my shoes off so I don't get mud all in the car. Oh boy. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Yeah. So after we make our way down into the depths of our trunk, right up here you see this kind of waffle looking thing? That is our vacuum reservoir. And that yellow with a gray stripe hose goes into it. And right here at this junction point is a super common spot for these to leak. So we're gonna be testing this right here at this hose and see if that will leak, as well as over here, this white, ugh, this white vacuum pod up in here is for our fuel door lock. Now, on these, yellow with a red stripe is unlock, yellow with a green stripe is lock. So let's grab our Mighty Vac and test each of these components and see what we have. To test our reservoir here, right over here there's a little coupler. And I'm going to slide this off of this side of the hose so that I've got my yellow and gray right here. And then I'll take my length of vacuum hose and shove it onto there. Doesn't have to be on far, just enough that it seals on. And then I'll take the other side of this and install it onto the Mighty Vac. Just like that. Now this is gonna take a lot of pumps to get any vacuum into this. So we're on just about 15 we're at just about 15, so we're going to let that sit for a couple minutes and see if it goes down. Right about 15, so even after sitting for a little bit, it's still about the same. Now one other trick we can use is our ears. Just listen. So I'm going to wiggle this hose up here where it goes into this little rubber coupler here and just see if anything sounds like it's hissing. So, quiet. I don't hear any hissing, and we're still holding 15. So that 15 there is a good sign. So I'm gonna set my Mighty Vac down. We're gonna disconnect from the reservoir, 
and come over here and check out this um, check out the fuel door actuator. Our little white thing, we're going to take and pull off our hoses. And so remember our red one goes on the back and our green one goes on the front ports. And now we're going to take and connect our muddy vac to each of these and see if they hold vacuum. So let's start with this back port. Stick that on there a little ways. And so let's see. It sure looks like it holds vacuum on that one. If it leaks, it's a very slow leak, which is not the problem I was having. So let's bleed it off, our little bleeder valve, and connect to our other port. Connect to our front port. There we go on the front port. It's not holding vacuum. Not even slightly. And also our actuator rod up in there is not moving. So that tells us that our lock side seal on that thing is broken. So conveniently, we have to take these two bolts off and then that whole assembly should basically just slide right out of here. So I can disconnect this. We'll pull this out, get a replacement, and my locking vacuum system woes will be over. We got that vacuum pod pulled out from our fuel door lock. Now, this thing, I don't know how easy it's going to be for me to show on this camera, but I'm going to have a picture on screen of exactly what ripped here. It's this little boot right here on the rod to the body of the thing, and it's got a great big old tear in it. So we're going to take the spring and little washer off of the shaft, and I'm going to attempt to remove this and replace it with one of these. Now I don't know that this is the perfect solution or the best solution, but it was the first thing that came to mind. Um, Apparently this boot has been discontinued and this whole assembly is like 50 bucks plus shipping. So I thought, you know what? Let's give a try of fixing it. So this is a boot for an RC car shock absorber. Now, it's about the right diameter on both ends. The only thing I'm not sure about is it's got like a little X cut into the top end of it. So I'm not sure if that's going to seal up or if we can use a like a little zip tie around there to help it seal up or something. But I've got my Mighty Vac here, and we're going to pop this thing on in place of this old, rotten, ripped, torn seal. And maybe, just maybe, we'll have a functional fuel door lock again for far less than the price of replacing the whole thing. Because the diaphragm itself is fine. It holds pressure. A-OK. -okay. It's just this being ripped is the only problem with it. So let's pull this off and see what we can do. Peeling this guy off of here could take some work, so I'm just going to cut it with a razor blade. Just kind of cut along there to give us a little relief so that we can peel this back. and pop it off of this lip. Then we can just unroll this whole thing. Let's grab this one and see if this will work for us. This might be a little bit too big. There were two sizes available. So let's see if we can work this up onto this part. I think that is not going to seal. Let's just check it with the Mighty Vac real quick. Push this in. Push our hose onto there. Get our Mighty Vac. We're going to have to come up with something better. Let's cut this top off.
and we just have that big opening there. zip tie into the little ridge that there is on the shaft. Let's just see if that works now. Hey, hey, look at that. That looks like it's holding vacuum to me. So this has worked by cutting off the end of that shock boot and putting the zip tie in the ridge of the shaft here, it's holding vacuum perfect. So, my friends, we have done it. That is how you can repair your fuel door actuator. And chances are, the other actuators are similar, I do believe. I'll have to pull one of them out in another video and we'll take a look at that. But in the meantime, I'm gonna reinstall this and let you guys Go do the same to your cars. That is, if you have a leaky fuel door actuator. If you don't, it would be kind of silly to go through this whole process. But hopefully that's been useful to you. And reinstalling this is really as simple as it gets. Just those two bolts, two hoses. Do the same thing I did, but play it backwards, I guess. So hopefully it's been useful to you. And we've got more stuff coming on the way. Um, working on all the vacuum diagrams and stuff. It is taking me some time. I'm no artist, that's for sure. And even something as simple as drawing colored lines seems like it's a daunting task. So I'll get there eventually. But uh, in the meantime, the link to all of that is up there or down there or description. What Somewhere, I may even just post it in the comments because it seems like that's the only way to actually find anything that I write, it seems like. So I may post it and pin it in the comments so that you can find the link to these shock boots as well as all the vacuum diagrams on our website. So we'll see you in the next video, whatever adventure I get into then. Thanks for watching.